Hey horror fans, thanks for joining me for this review of The Haunting of Hill House. Alright, cast and crew information down below. And we'll start with this IMDb plot here. Uh, flashing between past and present, a fractured family confronts haunting memories of their old home and terrifying events that drove them from it. Alright, so uh, this one is from Netflix. And it's been on there for a while now. So uh, you might be wondering, you know, why am I doing this review uh, so late? Uh, yeah, definitely should have seen this a long time ago, but, but didn't. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, if you caught my Halloween Horror Nights review, uh, that I watched the series um, just prior to going to the event because they have a haunted attraction based on the show. So I, I thought, you know, it's now or never. I wanted to make sure that I caught the show before I went into this haunted house so I would know what is going on here. Um, it helps. Um, I talked about that all in the um, Halloween Horror Nights review. Um, but it definitely helps to know a little bit about the house going in, so it was good to watch the show. Um, definitely added to the pleasure of walking to that house. Um, so if you're watching this review and you're, for whatever reason you're going to go to Universal, uh, definitely make sure you go into that haunted house. Um, that's just a little side fact here. As for for this series here, about 10 episodes again on Netflix, and uh, many of you are probably familiar with it, as uh, um, it goes into already uh, leads into Bly Manor. And uh, now, more recently released, uh, Midnight Mass. Uh, I guess it's just, you know, um, just a, a series of, of these movies that Mike Flanagan, right? Let me see. Yeah, Mike Flanagan um, has put together based on haunted houses and so forth. Um, since I have, I've not, I'll just let you guys know, I've not seen Bly Manor yet. And I believe it's The Haunting of Bly Manor. And um, I have not seen Midnight Mass, so uh, those are definitely on my list. Um, homework assignments to do. Um, October's already uh, as busy as it is, so I, I doubt I will get to them before the end of this month. But um, hopefully going into to the end of the year, I'll hopefully get to catch up on that. Um, so it's kind of a serious, I'm not really sure the, the ultimate connection between the three, besides that they are surrounding haunted houses from my understanding. Um, but uh, certainly worth, worth watching. Um, so let's take a dive a little bit into this one. Um, again, this is the, the Haunting of Hill House. And uh, I'm not really sure if this is based on true stuff or not. I, I didn't really research it or not if this is really a true house or this is just... Um, now that I think about it, it might have been from a, a book that, that um, was written. I don't know. You know I'm bad at, at looking at you know where these things come from. But um, anyway, this is going to follow a family, the Crane family. And... It's a story that kind of flips back and forth, and uh, you know I'll admit that I'm not always for the, the movies or or shows that that kind of show you know past, present, and um, go back and forth. But I, I think that this one is ultimately executed pretty well in in where they kind of lead them to, and. Uh, do the appropriate mixes as far as you know showing what you need to know and then um, kind of dropping in that that big boom like oh okay well that's where that goes and that's where that goes um, especially you know obviously towards the end and then towards the finale um, so be prepared for that uh, um, you know I know that again that that's not for everybody that's typically not for me um, you know, I guess in a serious situation, I guess you could just kind of get used to it and, and, and go with it. When I watch a movie, I guess, you know, sometimes it feels a little rushed because obviously they're um, going at about an hour and a half time here and, and trying to fit all that in. Where, where a series, um, 
you have a little bit more flexibility and more time to work with and, and can can smooth in, you know, all of the the past events that you want and kind of find that to land in the right places as far as, you know, in the present um, day that, that where you want that at. So I, I think they do a really good job of that at, at the end of, at the end of everything here. Uh, again, we're following the Crane family, mother, father, and uh, five kids, two are twins, boy and girl. And uh, again, you're going to see them as they're younger. And then you're going to see them uh, in the present day where they're, they're pretty much grown up. And um, basically the series of events happened when they're young. They're basically haunted. Um, I don't know how spoiler free I'm going to leave this. Uh, I'll try to leave it spoiler free reasonably. Um, just in case there's, there's people out there who haven't seen this, but uh, I'm trying to you know keep it as spoiler free as possible. But but basically you know the family moves into this house. The dad wants to kind of flip it. Uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, such a big house he's gonna flip. But um, that's his ultimate goal. So they they're gonna spend uh, the plan is to spend a couple of months there and fix it up. Him and the oldest child at the time. Are the ones mostly going to kind of um, do the fixing up here as the rest of the family just kind of enjoys the home and enjoys a different place to live. Uh, unfortunately, before they know it, uh, they start getting haunted. And uh, some of the children kind of know it more than others. Like the oldest child, he just kind of a, tries to put that away and is kind of oblivious to the fact. Whereas the two youngest twins, uh, they probably probably because they're the youngest and, and that's some of the times the way we see it in horror movies but uh, they seem to be mostly affected by it then the two other children uh, have it a little bit but they're basically going to get haunted eventually you know I think the father kind of looks it away but then ultimately knows that there's something going on and uh, the wife also suffers it and it, it kind of so, sort of as they play it off um runs in her family where, you know, I guess she has, um, kind of, I don't know how to explain it, like, I know those feelings or whatever, you know, maybe the psychicness or whatever, um, her side of the family might be a little bit more open to being haunted or, or kind of having those kind of feelings, so, um, that certainly then goes and spreads into the rest of the kids and, and so forth, and then, of course, the father's here left to, uh, kind of be the strong point, voice of reason, and, and to kind of try to pick things up. Um, something tragic is going to happen in, in this house at that time, back in the past. Um, I, I think um, several of the kids have their own tragic event kind of happen to them, or not tragic event, but haunting. Um, again, some of them more than others. Um, and some of them may have it and there's not know it, may not figure it out too much later um, that's kind of a hint that that's what's going on here um, let's see there are several cool ghosts in the story and I think you're gonna get to know some maybe a little bit better than others as it goes on um, and who they haunt um, there's the broke neck lady and uh, I really liked what they did there and how they kind of played that off and who she ultimately is and became. Uh, and then there's the tall man, who I think is probably the scariest figure here. Um, he does a pretty good job of uh, hunting Luke, who is the youngest child and one of the twins, the twin boy, obviously. And... Uh, there's going to be others. There's going to be times, you know, where they flash back and you're going to see people, you know, kind of ghostly figures here and there. And, um, there's going to be another one, which I'm not going to mention because that's going to be a spoiler. And then, um, obviously this is an old house. So old house has spirits, ghosts, and so forth. Uh, eventually you'll find out more about the house and uh, why these spirits lie there. Uh, the family has a, a, I don't know, you want to call her a servant, maid, um, and uh, a, her husband, who's, you know, kind of a handyman kind of a person, 
who have a history there and history with the previous owners and uh, they want to they'll work there for the cranes during the day and help them out with the children and help them out with the repairs and so forth but they will not stay there overnight um, they obviously know something's going on in this house so they will not stay there overnight so that's also a little hint that uh bad stuff is going to happen at night time here um if you ever stay anywhere and, and you have people who worked on the property and they don't want to stay there overnight for a reason uh that's a bad sign <laughs> not good uh so you're going to see a lot of the, the past and a lot of the family um as as they go through this time period I think it was only a couple of months, but obviously since the show stretched out, it almost make, makes it feel that they've been there a lot longer. But um, you really hit the ultimate end of the day, and I think by the time you hit the finale, you'll kind of get the gravity that it really wasn't a long time. But as the, as you're watching the episodes, it almost feels like a long time. But you'll you'll see kind of the the, the events that happen. Uh, it kind of one of those things where you know it, it happens in the past so in, the, in the first episode it's going to pick up at a point and show you an event that's happening and then kind of dive even deeper in the past to kind of lead back to that event and um, you'll kind of see how that plays out and, and why that's important and so forth you'll find out you know again why this this place is haunted why there are still ghosts there and so forth and um as far as, as the present, uh, again, all the children are grown up, but that doesn't mean the ghosts haven't followed them. Uh, they, like I said, the oldest child, uh, he just kind of tried to put it past him and then kind of close that chapter, but then again, he hasn't because he's basically made his money by writing books uh, based on haunted houses and so forth, and part of it has come from this, and he's got a little bit of a fan base and so forth uh, because of this. But he's a big denier of, of really ghost um, without telling anybody. But obviously some of his family members know. And uh, you have Luke, who again is the youngest child here. He suffers. Um, he's one of the ones that suffer the most. He obviously had one of the most, ha most haunted there. He, he kind of becomes uh, addicted to drugs and uh, it's kind of has that battle. Um, and I think what they do here is kind of cleverly also, while you're, you're seeing a lot of things unfold and lead to things in the past, uh, I think, you know, they start in a certain place when the, in the present uh, view, but also kind of mix that up a little bit. And you're going to find out that what you might think and what they're giving you is, is not, as, as, uh, not as clear as day. Uh, so you have to really pay attention here. This is not a series to kind of turn on and, and be doing other stuff. You know, I'm famous for that. I've said it many a time. Uh, but this series, we, you know, we actually, I watched with my wife, so, you know, wasn't really too occupied with this, more and more of watching this um, than doing other stuff. So it's definitely one that you're gonna wanna watch these puzzle pieces kind of be put together. Uh, and uh, even when you're watching the present day, uh, they might not do all the present day in the complete order that it is and they're going to kind of mix that up and drop in pieces here and there and then you'll be surprised to see how certain things and certain uh, characters uh, lives kind of really played out when they kind of make you think they played out in a different way and uh, he's definitely one of those characters um, that that happens to and uh, again there's going to be some tragedy that happens on this end too and then the in the more present day there's going to be tragedy there too um again everything is is going to be because of this house and because of what happened in the past and because they're still haunted by their ghosts haunted by the tall man haunted by the broken neck lady and uh it's all going to come to a head eventually and, and, and you know I, I don't want to spoil that ending I was very satisfied with the way it ended. I thought it, you know, it makes sense. It came to a good conclusion. Uh, you get to see, you know, again, I, I liked when everything kind of unfolded and you saw really what happened to some of these characters. Um, you know, this is horror, but I, I think 
this is also a little bit tough to watch because it's a little bit sad. Um, and maybe that that's a credit to the acting here, especially when they're young. Um, Luke, the character again, you know, he's a sad character both in, in, in the past and the present um, because he's such a cute little boy when he's little. And then as you're watching this, you kind of see what happened to him as an adult, and, and it's really sad. And, and as this kind of goes on, um, you can really feel for that character. And, uh, you know, I think that that is one of the things that kind of sitting through this and when you go through 10 episodes and you're investing your time, it kind of brings you to us, opposed to sitting in a theater for an hour and a half. You kind of, even though it's still not the longest of times, but you still get a little bit invested in these characters as it's going along. And uh, I think because he's such a cute little kid and then he's so innocent, obviously, you know, kids have that in them and that's one of the things they bring to the table and in horror movies is being that, that innocent. Um, but then you see what happened to him later in life. It, it is um, definitely sad and, and, and it's gonna touch you to kind of see, you know, some of these characters, maybe you'll relate to, to you know, some of the other characters. You know, I, I would say uh, his story kind of touched me the most, but like I said, each one of them is gonna have their own kind of thing they're going through here. Um, ghost related, personally related, and and when you see them when they're younger and see them when they're older, you know it's it's it is you know I, I think you're gonna get that feeling, and I, I think that that's a credit to you know the story and a credit to their acting and uh, everything they they did here, um, putting that all together, um, when they can kind of get the audience invested like that and, and to get you to feel for their characters and and their journey and where where they were and where they end up being as opposed to being, ah, oh, whatever happened there and whatever happened here, you know, I don't, you know, I don't care for them, whatever. Um, I, I think you will. Uh, maybe not all the characters, there's, there's one or two that are, um, there's a group of sisters here and, um, I guess it gets a little more tragic for, for one or two and them more than the others. And, uh, I think there's a sister here that, that at least one of them that, that uh, you're not necessarily going to like. But I think, again, if you play to the, um, you know, take in consideration everything they went through and where they are now, uh, you might be able to give that, that sister a break. I, I don't know. Maybe you won't. Maybe you just won't like them overall. Um, but I think, you know, they really do a good job of, of when you get to the present is uh, not making everything so plain. Everything you see is not just going to be so simple and, and not what you expect. Um, which, you know, it, it could have been really easy for them to do. Um, so, and as far as the horror, I think the horror is pretty good. Like I said, the, the broken neck lady and the tall man, uh, I don't know if that was their official ghost names or not, but that's who I'm referring them to as. Um, I think they do a pretty good job with them. Um, there are going to be some scary moments. Uh, there Again, this is a ghost. I'm not going to say it's, it's built a whole lot on jump scare. Um, I think, uh, you know, there might have been a moment here or there. Uh, but it's definitely going to be dark. It's definitely going to be creepy. Uh, I, I think, you know, when they bring these characters out, uh, you know, it's might leave that chill on you. Um, it's that kind of thing. It's not so much driven as it is. We want you to jump out of your seats. Um, but just that that kind of thing you get when you're watching a ghost thing. And you kind of feel for the person being haunted again. You know, you're going to see um, there's one scene where X character is there. And uh, almost every time they turn... Uh, there's X ghost and, and, and you're kind of like, you know, you wish they would be able to shake them, but, but they can't. And um, obviously that, that ghost is going to get closer and closer and, you know, you can kind of feel the tension and, 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 and feel the, oh my God, what's going to happen when this, this, they both kind of come face to face. So it's more of that than the jump scare type, but I, I still think um, it's just a, a very, very good mix. And here, you know, I mean, they listed here drama, horror, mystery, thriller. I, I think they do a good job of, it's a really good melting pot of, of all of those. Um, so, I, I, and I, so I think you guys can enjoy it. 
Um, I, I don't remember the, the reviews of Blind Manor, uh, but obviously, like I said, Midnight Mass just came out, and well, not reading any of them, but I've just seen the headlines and what people kind of wrote down and, and so forth um, on Twitter. It seemed like a lot of people really liked it, and they did a really good job. So, um, obviously, he's built a strong base here, and uh, obviously, it started here, and I'm, I'm going to assume Blind Manor was good as well. And uh, as I can tell, it seems like people really liked Midnight Mass. So um, I'm going to give this one uh, four pools of blood. I guess I'm going to start high and uh, I'll watch the other ones and, and see maybe see if they can, can hold the candlestick to that. Um, as, I, as I have this open here on my phone while I'm watching this, I, this just kind of showing the, the trailer again, just remembering a moment here or whatever. One of the sisters does work in a funeral home, and, and that's going to lead to a creepy events or two. Um, just to throw that in as a side thing, as they just showed it. Um, anyway, Four Pools of Blood in that, again, is out of five. Um, I definitely, definitely recommend it if, if you're, um, you know, I know October is a hard time. There's a lot of new stuff coming at you, but once October ends, if you're looking for something that you might have missed, um, definitely go back to this and... and um, definitely, obviously, welcome you know your guys' opinion in the comment section. But if you guys have seen Blind Manor or um, Midnight Mass and you want to throw your opinion there in the comment section, I'd certainly be interested. Um, please, no spoilers if you can. Um, but you know, I know there's people out there who get enjoyment of spoiling things. So um, you know, if you have to, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, that, that's gonna be it. Um, Horoscope reviews. is where you can find more reviews, written reviews, especially. Uh, but the video reviews are there. Um, everything I review can be found there. Video written. Um, if you're just interested in the video reviews, just subscribe, like if you like the video, like if you like the review, uh, or just like if you like the movie or topic that we've discussed, that I've discussed. Um, uh, Twitter, Facebook information down below as well. If you want to reach out on social media and talk about this, talk about horror, anything going on, or if there's something you want me to review, um, reach out to me there. Twitter's probably the best, um, or leave it in the comments section here. Um, yeah, and with that, I, I guess I will move on to my next review, and I will catch you later, horror fans.